Okay, in this podcast, we're going to talk about theorems related to the Sakari quadrilateral. Uh, and as you recall from our, our introduction, the Sakari quadrilateral consists of one line segment called a base and two line segments on the side that are congruent to one another, and then a line segment on the top, which is the summit. And uh, the angles at the base are right angles by definition. And then, of course, we have these other angles called summit angles uh, for this in the column alpha and beta. And uh, you'll recall from the, from the introduction that uh, Sakari intended to use this to prove that, use these quadrilaterals to prove that the parallel postulate actually followed from the other uh, axioms of Euclidean geometry. And so uh, the intent there was to show that these summit angles must, um, must be uh, right angles. Um, but it turns out when we assume the characteristic postulate of hyperbolic geometry, you don't not only don't arrive at a contradiction with all the other axioms, but you end up concluding that these angles are congruent to one another and that they're acute. And that's what theorems nine point that's what theorem nine point eight says. Theorem nine point seven uh, is actually an intermediate result. It says uh, if you connect the midpoints of the base and the summit, then that line is going to be perpendicular to the base and to the summit. Okay. And since there is a lot of overlap between the proof, the proof of the initial part of theorem 9.8 and the proof of theorem 9.7, I'm actually going to prove it all at once uh, in these four steps. So uh, our, our first step is to note that if we form these triangles in our Sakari quadrilateral, uh, we have two right triangles, and of course these two sides are congruent, uh, AD and B. And BC are congruent segments, and since E is the midpoint of AB, then the bottom side here on the left is congruent to the bottom side on the right, so that's going to show that triangle ADE is congruent to triangle BCE, and that's by the side angle side theorem. We have the sides AD is co uh, congruent to BC, and we have the angle DAE uh, congruent to the angle CBE, and we have the sides AE congruent to BE. So that means that those triangles congruent, uh, which means, in particular, that these diagonals here are congruent. And now, if we look at the other pair of triangles, triangle DFE, uh, again, since F is the midpoint of, se of the segment DC, then this DF has the same length as DC, and of course this side FE is shared by both of them. So we end up with the congruence of triangle DFE and triangle CFE. And this is by the side, side, side theorem. Okay, so this, uh, the congruence of these two pairs of triangles is actually gonna give us nearly everything we want. Uh, so first step, we're gonna show that these angles here are congruent and therefore uh, are each right angles. So we know that the measure of angle DFE uh, is equal to the measure of angle CFE by uh, the congruence of those two triangles. Uh, and since these two angles uh, are, are formed when a line intersects another line, we know that those two angles have to add up to 180 degrees. So the measure of angle DFE plus the measure of angle CFE equals two pi, or equals pi radians. So uh, each of those individually have to be exactly half that. So the measure of angle DFE equals the measure of angle CFE, which is equal to pi over two radians. Okay, so now this uh, segment that connects the midpoints is perpendicular to the summit. <coughs> and now um, we check out step two. We need to show that um, this segment connecting the midpoints is actually perpendicular to the base as well. And for this, I'm going to label I'm going to give some angles some names just to make my life easier. Um, well, let's call this uh, rho and theta. Okay. So we know that triangle ADE is congruent to triangle BCE, so these corresponding angles must be congruent. So angle DEA is congruent to angle CEB, um, so rho actually appropriately labels both in terms of measure, and also angle DEF is congruent to uh, angle CEF, so we can put a theta there. And so we know that rho plus theta plus rho plus theta equals pi radians, because those are the angles formed along, along a straight line. And so that means that rho plus theta equals pi over 2. Now rho plus theta is the angle, um, is the measure of angle BEF, and it's equal to the measure 
from angle AEF. So this segment EF must be perpendicular to the base as well. And that does it. That does it for theorem 9.7. Now for step three, we're actually going to move into the proof of theorem 9.8. We're going to uh, show that the summit angles are congruent. And we're going to use the, the same little trick that we just did in this last step. And I'm going to think of, uh, well, I'm out of Greek letters that I can easily draw. We're going to label these angles X and Y over here. So angle BCE is an angle of measure X, and angle ECF is an angle of measure Y. Again, by the congruence of these triangles, we have Y over here and X over here. So we have that the measure of angle ADF, which is equal to the sum, measure of angle ADE plus the measure of angle EDF uh, by the congruence of these triangles up here is equal to the measure of angle, let's see, ADE, that's our X, so angle BCE, and the measure of angle EDF is our Y, so that's the measure of angle ECF, which is uh, those two combined, the measure of angle BCF. So our summit angles are congruent. Okay. And finally, we're going to show that the summit angles are acute, and we're going to do this by forming an omega triangle. So supposing, I did not go so well, supposing we drew the parallels to the right uh, at each of these points C and D. Now because these two line segments have uh, the same length, their summit angles are going, or the uh, angle of parallelism are going to be equal. So if this is our angle, um, let's say this is angle Z, and this angle over here must also be angle Z, and these meet out at some ideal point omega. Now because D, triangle D, C, omega, is an omega triangle, the exterior angles are less than, or are greater than their opposite interior angles. So that means that angle, the measure of angle E, C, omega, is actually bigger than the measure of angle E, D, omega, or C, D, omega. Okay, so this angle here is bigger than this angle here. Now that means that the measure of angle A, D, C is less than the measure of angle B, C, E. But their sum, the measure of angle A, D, C, plus the measure of angle B, C, E, yeah, is equal to 2 pi, or sorry, equal to pi radians. Now why is that? Well, measure angle A, D, C is the summit angle on the left, and we know that that's equal to the measure of the summit angle on the right, and the summit angle on the right, along with angle B, C, E, covers this whole line. So their sum must be pi radians. So A, D, C, the measure of angle A, D, C, plus the measure of angle B, C, E, uh, is pi radians, but ADC is smaller. So that means that the measure of angle ADC, which is equal to the measure of angle BCE, are both less than pi radians, or pi over 2 radians. And we win. <laughs>